the time is now 6.04. Um, I call this meeting of the Amherst Zoning Board of Appeals to order. My name is Steve Judge, as ZBA chair, I want to welcome everyone to this meeting. Pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Additionally, the meeting rec recordings may be viewed via the Town of Amherst YouTube channel and ZBA webpage. In accordance with provisions of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 40A and Article 10, Special Permit Granting Authority of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw, this public meeting has been duly advertised and notice thereof has been posted and mailed to parties at interest. We will begin with the roll call of members of the ZBA and paneled for tonight's meeting. Steve Judge, Chair is present. Ms. Parks? Here. Mr. Maxfield? Here. Mr. Gilbert? Here. Ms. Winter? We also have um, Eric Cochran, uh, associate member observing. And uh, I don't think Mr. Meadows is on. Also in attendance is Maureen Pollock, planner with the city. The Zoning Board of Appeals is a quasi-judicial body that operates under the authority of Chapter 48 of the General Laws of the Commonwealth for the purpose of promoting the health, safety, and convenience and general welfare of the inhabitants of the town of Amherst. One of the most important elements of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw is section 10.38. Specific findings from this section must be made for all our decisions. All hearings and meetings are open to the public and are recorded by town staff. The procedure is as follows. The petitioner presents the application to the board during the hearing, after which the board will ask questions for clarification or additional information. After the board has completed its questions, the board will seek public input. The public speaks with the permission of the chair. If a member of the public wishes to speak, they should so indicate by using the raise hand function on their screen. The chair with the assistance of the staff will call upon people wishing to speak. When you are recognized, provide your name and address to the board for the record. All questions and comments must be addressed to the board. The board will normally hold public hearings where information from the project and input from the public is gathered. Public meetings are a portion when the board deliberates and is generally, generally not an opportunity for public comment. If the board feels that it has enough information and time, it will decide upon the applications tonight. Each petition is heard by the board, is distinct and evaluated on its own merits, and the board is not ruled by precedent. Statutorily, for a special permit, the board has 90 days from the close of the hearing to file a decision. For a variance, the board has 100 days from the date of filing to file its decision. No decision is final until a written decision is signed by the sitting board members and is filed with the town clerk's office. Once the decision is filed with the town clerk, there is a 20-day appeal period for any aggrieved party to contest the decision with the relevant judicial body in Superior Court. After the appeal period, the permit must be recorded at the Registry of Deeds to take effect. Tonight's agenda, a public meeting, ZBA FY 2021-22, Christine and Peter Gray Mullen, to review and approve the special permit decision with conditions for the public from the public hearing previously held and closed on September 30, 2021, to allow an increase in the number of residential units, converted dwellings, from one to two under sections 3.324, 7.9, and 10.38 of the zoning bylaw, located at 37 Farview Way, Map 8C, Parcel 7, Neighborhood Residence RN Zoning District. After tonight's agenda, uh, after that, our tonight's meeting, um, there all, there's always our um, opportunity for general public comment on any matter not before the board tonight and any other business not anticipated within the previous 48 hours and then adjournment. First order of business is public meeting on ZBA FY 2021-22, 
Christine and Peter Gray Mullen to review and approve the special permit decision with conditions for the public hearing previously held and closed on September 30th, 2021 to allow an increase in the number of residential units converted dwellings from one to two under section 3.324, 7.9, 10.38 of the zoning bylaw located at 37 Fireview Way, map 8C, parcel seven, neighborhood residents are in zoning district. Um, as you recall, members, we, oh, I wanna note that um, Ms. Ms. Winter has, uh, is in attendance. So we have a full compliment. And I also note that Rob Mora, my building commissioner, is also online. Um, as you recall, we held a hearing and in September, I think it was on this project, this application voted uh, an approval of a special permit with conditions. Subsequent to that time, we've had a administrative meeting. Um, some questions were raised about the kind of um, conditions and how we should treat conditions for owner occupants versus non-owner occupant rental property, how we should treat transfer of property from um, when there is a special permit, does a property have to, um, does the new property owner have to appear beforehand, before the transfer takes place? Does the special permit uh, expire? We dealt with all these questions in our administrative meeting a couple of weeks ago. Pers subsequent to that and pursuant to that meeting, the staff and I looked at the um, most recent um, special permits that we approved and that had not been signed or had not been finalized and notice that there was some, we could be consistent, more consistent with the, what we discussed in the uh, administrative meeting. And you have before you um, a marked up version, I think you got it this afternoon, a marked up version of suggested changes to the conditions that were approved in, um, in September, I think it was September 9th, was it not, Maureen? It was uh, September 30th. With September thirtieth of the public hearing, and when you guys made a motion to uh, September thirtieth, yep. Okay, on September thirtieth. All right. Um, I think you've got it. You had a marked up version of the conditions then, and the suggested changes to those conditions pursuant to I think compliance with what we talked about at the administrative meeting, and what just seems to make some sense. Um, and I'd be willing to walk through those with you very briefly. Um, if that would help. I think what is most important is a, a couple of things. The first, does everybody have that piece of paper that Maureen sent out? Here we go. Thanks, Maureen. So this, I think in number one, um, for the first change is, I think is purely, um, grammatical, we need to, it's gotta be built and managed, it's also gotta be maintained. Um, secondly, the second change uh, in the next sentence shall be reviewed by the building commissioner to determine if submission to the ZBA is needed. If you'll recall, one of the things we talked about at the administrative meeting is we wanna, when, all, when it's at all possible, avoid having applicants and property owners have to come to the ZBA for really um, minor, minor, minor things. Things that are not, and we can, there's no reason that those can't be taken care of by the building commissioner. So things that are really truly minimal can be taken care of by the building commissioner. He shall review those, but the building commissioner should review those changes and say to himself, if they're big enough, say, no, you got, this has got to go to the, the ZBA, either in a public hearing, if it's a minor change, or if it's a, a significant change, a significant change to a public hearing where there's uh, more, there's public act, uh, public comments, there's more notification, there's more, uh, it's, it's a larger bureaucratic process. But I think this speed, this will help to speed up the process. So in this case, if this owner or a subsequent owner has a, has a de minimis change, it can be looked at by the building commissioner. He can say, this is de minimis, it doesn't have to go to the board. If it does have to go to the board, uh, we will then review it and determine if, if it can be handled in a hearing or in a meeting or in a hearing. So that's the first change. Um, are there any questions on condition one from board members? Okay, these seem to make sense. And I think it's probably a good template for moving forward with um, future um, applications. Second one, again, this is more so that 
as it's specific to this specific application, this being a converted dwelling. Um, we're talking about the, the dwelling, not the rooms. So the, the drawings, um, the floor plans of the, of the converted dwelling is what we're really dealing with. So this, that's the change there. It's, I don't think that's controversial. It seems to make sense. We can move on down, Maureen, for a little farther. Um, this one is number seven comes up later on. So we'll, we'll skip that. Number nine deals with um, number nine tries to deal with two different circumstances or tries to identify one of two different circumstances. In one case, you have a change of ownership of the owner occupied rental property that doesn't involve going to a non-owner occupied. So the change of ownership is still gonna be owner occupied as opposed to selling to somebody else. And the change of ownership of an owner occupied rental property, the new property owners shall be required to submit an updated management plan to the planning department. At that point, the planning department can look at it if they say that this is consistent with the approved management plan or it's consistent with current needs, it can be approved. If the, the, if the um, planning department feels that this doesn't, it isn't consistent with the um, special permit it's, or it's insufficient as a management plan and they can say, well, it has to come to the, um, has to come to the board for review. But in the event, but we have a different case when the uh, change of ownership goes to a non-owner occupied property. And Maureen, would you move down to 12? I think eventually, Maureen, I think it'd be good to put 10 and 12 together just for ease of reading. But, and so we have a different, we're, we're proposing here a different condition um, when the change of ownership or change, yeah, change of ownership or the change in the current owner's residence. So this property becomes non-owner occupied. Right now, in this case, this property is owner occupied if the property owners would move or if they would sell it to um, a non-owner occupied, uh, owner who's not gonna occupy that property, then the following takes place. A, the property owner shall be required to return to the Board of Appeals um, Zoning Board of Appeals for a public hearing for review and approval of the management plan, the management plan, additional information required for any residential rental, we, to approve the standard lease, which includes the maximum number of people, of individuals allowed to occupy the converted dwelling, the maximum number of overnight guests, and the maximum number of people allowed, allowed on the property at any time, as well as a parking management plan. That's similar to what we've, what we've talked about in the past in all cases. But I think at the last meeting and at this, oh yeah, and also, excuse me, thank you, Maureen. The last is that, that at that hearing, the board shall determine whether additional conditions are needed to meet section 10.38 of findings under the zoning bylaw. That's what we were imposing on all, on all transfers of ownership. And um, we talked about that at that meeting, our administrative meeting, and at the last hearing, there was some public comment to the fact that we ought to be finding a way to make to have less burden on owner occupied rental properties and converted dwellings in this case, rather than known non owner occupied. And that seems to me to be, make sense to have those, that differentiation of treatment. This is one way to try to accomplish that. And that's what we've tried to accomplish here in this, in this um, change in this, these conditions. Um, do we go through the rest of the Marine? Let's go back up a bit. Anyway, does, do people have questions about the owner-occupied transfer of change of ownership and the non and, and a change of ownership to non-owner-occupied? I don't want to move through this too quickly. If you have questions, Rob and Maureen, did I explain that correctly, or is there um, anything you wish to add? No, I don't have anything to add. Miss Parks. Um, so I'm interested in why the complaint response plan was, um, is, uh, struck out. Yeah. Yep. Uh, what we've learned is that the complaint response plan, um, is, was a really good, what I'm, I've learned is it was a really good idea before we had the residential rental permit system and with the residential rental permit system, 
they have to have that information there. And this is almost duplicative of the complaint response plan is almost duplicative of what's already contained in the uh, in the rental um, permit system, residential permit system. And Rob, can you speak to that? I, I know you have to deal with that in your department. Yeah, so the, um, the, the application process for the residential rental permit requires um, contact information for the owner of the property and also emergency contact information. It may be the same, uh, but we, you know, we do collect that information. It's uh, updated annually in the, during the renewal process. And it's uh, not only available to us, but it's also available to the general public through the website uh, in case uh, an abutting property owner wants to get in touch with, uh, with, with the owner of the property where there might be an issue to report. So that was largely based off of this model that the complaint response plan was created by the ZBA years ago when we were writing the, uh, the rental regulations to, um, to kind of grab that, you know, that piece of the process that the uh, zoning board was using back then. So as Steve mentioned, you know, it's, it really is, um, you know, doubling the effort by having another form created and, and submitted with, with another application when we are collecting it electronically in a very efficient way and uh, it's stored electronically and available uh, for everyone to access. Yes. I sort of thought, so is that part of the, like the management plan additional information required? Is that where the complaint response plan is within that? Oh, you mean two double I? Uh, yeah. yeah um, yes, it, it is uh, listed under the management plan um, for additional information required for any residential uh, rental, as well as it's listed in the ZBA rules and regulations. Okay. As a requirement. Good question, Ms. Parks, thank you. Any other questions on uh, Mr. Maxfield? I just wanna ask, um, so how did this maybe, it was a little bit more clear and I'm just just uh, blanking on, on it. How did, uh, how did this all even come about? Was this uh, this you and Maureen working on this? How did we, how did we get here with um, all these changes in the first place? Well, I think the reason this came about is um, we we're trying to we we're, we we're trying to reflect what we talked about in the administrative meeting to try to have sensible um, transfer of ownership conditions conditions that sensibly re responded to transfer of ownership in certain cases and it seems and, and this was this this case this application had not been finalized um, this would seem to be the this seemed then to be the first place where we could take some of that uh, learning that we had at the administrative meeting and apply it to these conditions since there was since it hadn't been signed it hadn't been finalized yet and that's the reason I think this one was chosen uh, Mr. Maxfield was, was because of that um, and and quite frankly it's an opportunity for us to on on a converted dwelling on something that seems pretty to, to me seems pretty simple to have a less onerous condition placed on the property owner pursuant to what we talked about at the administrative uh, the, the administrative meeting, then waiting, then continuing what we did earlier and then applying it the next time that we have a, an application similar to this. So that's the reason I think we we um, took this up now. Oh yeah. Maureen, is that, go ahead, Dylan. I just wanna say, no, I, uh, I, I, I feel that I, I actually really like um, I think this is, is definitely an improvement, and I think uh, it does really reflect a lot of what we talked about in the uh, in the administrative meeting. I guess I'm just asking: was this something that was was worked on primarily by um, yourself and Maureen and Maureen or uh, Ms. Pollock and Mr. Mora, or just ha how did this get about? Because I I actually really like all these changes here. Um, uh, Mr. Pollock and uh, Mr. Pollock, Ms. Pollock and Mr. Mora. Uh, did the lion's share of the work on this. Um, we, we talked, um, I relied upon their judgment and uh, their advice, um, but we had a give and take, but I'd have to say 90% of the work came from, not 70% of the work came from them, for sure. 
I guess I'll say I, I, I like the, I think these are all uh, good improvements. I'd, I'd love to hear from the applicant as to whether or not they, they agree that these changes are uh, less onerous as well. Um, we can hear from them if we, if, if not right we, in this moment, at yes. least at some point in the, the meeting for approval. Let's, let's get, yeah, let's get our discussion done um, yeah. first. And then, and if, then if the applicant wishes to speak, they, uh, we can listen to them. Um, are there any other, so I think we've gone through everything, have we not? Uh, property should, let's just move back up again, Maureen, to um, the six, can we, or seven? Yeah, all right. So converted dwellings, we didn't make any changes on two. Okay, we have all of that, there you go. Keep going, all right. So on one, we, we've talked about those changes. Two was just the, the wording con converted dwelling. Um, no changes, three, four, five, and six. No changes on seven. Eight, um, property, shall be, uh, property shall be free of litter and debris. That's, that's just really renumbering. Nine, we've talked about, um, and we're gonna put these two to, as nine and 10, uh, so they're easy for ease of reading. Um, grass area regularly maintained. And then um, this one we just talked about and that's, and that is it, I think. Those are the changes. So I wanna have the opportunity for anybody on the board to raise any more comments. All right. Um, do we, do, does the board feel it necessary to um, entertain public comment on this or not? I, I, think, I think we've worked with the, as far as I'm concerned, we've worked with the, the applicant, the staff has worked with the applicant. Um, and I think this, these are good changes. Um, I guess we could have the, we can have the applicant speak if that's the desire of the board. Is the applicant on the call, Maureen? Uh, yes. All right. Um, let's have. Did the Dylan applicant. have something to say? Oh, yep, Dylan. Oh yeah, I just I just wanted to chime in with uh, I, only if the the applicant really feels like talking this meeting. I don't I don't want to necessarily put them on the spot, but if they do, I'd love to hear their their feedback on uh, the changes if they they wish to provide it. All right. So if they um, do, they could press the raise your hand feature. Function. function. If they want, wish to speak to the sure. changes. Uh, sure, okay. Um, hi, Christine and Peter. Uh, I, I, I asked you to unmute, let's see here. There we go. Hi, Christine and Peter. Hello, Christine and Peter here, Gray Mullen. Um, all we have to say is, uh, after the, the first set came out, we, we did have concerns before signing and we just wanna thank the town staff and, and, and you all, the ZBA for, you know, really giving us a hard look and a hard um, thought to logistics and owner occupied and, and uh, non-owner occupied. And I think this, uh, as Mr. Maxwell was saying, I, I think this sets some good precedent for future going forward, especially for owner occupied um, properties and, um, you know, if it does transition to something else. I, I think this catches what you all are trying to, you know, set with zoning. And so, we support it. And, and we support it. So thank you so much um, for considering doing this extra work. Thank you, Ms. Ms. Mullen, we appreciate it. All right, um, I don't, I think what we have to do is, a, is um, approve these changes. We don't have to make findings under 10.38 or the other, other areas, because we already did that in the last hearing. And I don't think any of, it's my opinion that nothing that we've changed in these conditions would change the findings we made in, so on September 30th. So um, Rob and Maureen, unless that's incorrect, I would entertain a motion to approve to approve the changes to the special permit 
as um, put on the screen by Maureen that you've gotten with the caveat that we're gonna move those two uh, conditions, tenant dealing with owner occupant and non-owner occupant next to each other for ease of breathing. Do I have a, a motion to that effect? So moved. Is there a second? Ms. Park, seconds. Second. Is there any discussion on that motion? Okay. If there's no discussion, we move to a vote. The vote is a roll call vote. Um, and we need four out of the five to approve this. Um, I vote aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Mr. Gilbert? Aye. Ms. Winter? We can't hear you, but I saw you nod. I'm gonna take that as an affirmative yes, okay? <laughs> All right. So we that's the, the vote is five to nothing. The motion passes, the conditions are amended. And um, I guess um, I would encourage, since we've, we've done this, this was the first closed on the 30th, we probably have a short time frame in which to write this up and get it signed. So when Maureen, ask you to get down to the city hall and sign it or to authorize her to sign for you, respond right away so we can get this out to the, uh, and, and file as quickly as possible. Okay. And um, expect that right. evening tomorrow. <laughs> okay, that would be good. So, and if you can't make it, you can, you can authorize her via uh, email or, and tell her that you approve it and um, she can sign your name to it. All right. That's, that's it. Uh, let's go on to the uh, public comment. Is there any public comment on matters not before the board tonight? Maureen, do we have anybody that attended? Um, so if there is any member that wants to speak about any items not on tonight's agenda, you can press the raise your hand function. Well, we have Dylan. <laughs> oh, um, Mr. Maxfield, yes. Uh, yeah, just a quick question. Just, we gotten any word on uh, if we're ever going to be back in person or are we looking at a uh, virtual for many more months? Have you heard anything, Maureen? I have not. Um, I believe we have until April uh, under the state to, or we'll I'll let Rob speak to that. Yeah, so what, what the, the latest um, plan is, is that the, the new council will take their seats on January 3rd and one of the first items they're gonna discuss are uh, in-person or, or remote meetings for themselves and for the other boards and committees uh, throughout the town. So I think that's, that's where we're gonna get the next, you know, the next guidance on where we're going in the, the beginning of the year after the January 3rd meeting of the new council. Cool, thank you. All right. No, no comments from the public. Um, there's no business not anticipated. I have no other business not anticipated in the last 48 hours. I would entertain a motion for us to adjourn. So moved. <laughs> well, that was done together. So Ms. Parks gets up first on that one. Uh, Mr. Maxfield, I'm, I'm taking Thank that you. yours was a second. All right. Um, this is a non-debatable debatable motion. So the vote occurs. <laughs> I vote aye. Uh, Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Mr. Gilbert? Aye. Ms. Winter? Aye. Ah, oh, we hear you loud and clear that time. Good. <laughs> All right. Uh, 